In this video, we're going to take a look at the first part of calculating limits using the limit laws. So the, in the previous sections, we use graphs to find and or guess the values of limits. But these methods don't always lead to a correct answer or they're very difficult to find. So we're going to look at the properties of limits. That way we can calculate limits algebraically. Now before we look at examples, let's take a look at what the limit laws are. So suppose that C is a constant and the limits uh, we have limit of f of x as x approaches a, and we have the limit of g of x as x approaches a. And let's say those limits exist. Then we have these five laws. So the sum law and the difference law are very similar. Um, it states that if the limit of two functions, which are added or subtracted, we can actually find the limit of each function separately and then add the limits together or subtract them. Um, constant multiple law says that if we're looking for the limit of a number, the constant multiplied by a function, we can actually find the limit of that function first and then multiply by the constant. In the product law, if I am looking for the limit of two functions being multiplied, I can find the limit of each function separately and then multiply the results of those two limits separately to get the overall limit. And similar with the quotient law. So if I am finding the limit of a quotient, two functions that are divided by each other, I can find the limit of each function separately and then divide those results to get an overall limit, as long as the limit of g of x doesn't equal zero. Now there are a few other limit laws that are very helpful. So let's take a look at those. The first limit is the power law. And it states that if I'm looking for uh, the limit of a function that's raised to a power, I can actually find the limit of that function first and then raise it to that power. And this is where n is a positive integer. Uh, number seven states that what happens when I'm looking for the limit of a number. So I'm gonna actually refer back to the graph to look at this one. So if we look at the graph and remember that the C is our expression, so we're saying that Y is equal to C. So Y equals to C means that we actually have a straight line. So no matter where I go, no matter what X approaches on this straight horizontal line, you notice that the Y value is always going to be C. So the limit of this horizontal line, the constant, as X approaches any number, the limit will always be C. Um, number eight, the limit of x as x approaches a. Now, if you think about what y equals x looks like, so we'll draw a little graph here. So this graph is a diagonal line right through the origin. And we know that these points here are 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and so on. So I know that when the limit um, of this function, this y equals x line, as x approaches a, so if x approaches 1, then my y value will be 1. If it, x approaches 2, y will be 2, and so on. So you'll notice that the limit um, of x as x approaches a is actually the same number that we plug in. So the limit of x as x approaches a is equal to a. So knowing number eight, we're going to use that and apply that to number nine. So number nine asks, uh, so the limit of x to the power of n as x approaches a simply is a to the power of n because we know that the limit of x is already a and then by using the power law, we know that we can put the exponent and apply that after we found the limit inside. And remember that n is a positive integer. And number 10, uh, similar to number 9, if we take the limit or find the limit of the nth root of x, we can take the nth root of a, and that will be our limit. And then the very last one, the limit of a function, um, this one as x approaches a, we can actually find the limit of the function first and then nth root it after. So I can rewrite this as the nth root 
of the limit of f of x as x approaches a. So we can find the limit first and then apply the nth root. And then when we put in the a into here, we actually have the nth root of f over a. Sorry, f of a. Now, if f is a polynomial or a rational function and a is in the domain of f, then you can directly substitute a into x in the function. And that makes it really easy to find uh, the limits of polynomials and rational um, functions. All right, so let's take a look at some examples of how to apply these different laws. So determine the limits, assuming um, that we are given the limits. So f of x as x approaches 6 is 1. And the limit of g of x as x approaches 6 is negative 3. So I'm telling you what the limits are of the function f of x and g of x as x approaches 6. So let's try to answer these questions. So the first one here, I'm asking you to find the limit of a function f minus 5. Using the difference law, we can separate this into two parts. So I'm going to separate this into the limit of f of x as x approaches 6 minus the limit of 5 as x approaches 6. So when I look at this, I know that this first piece here, that's equal to 1. So I'm going to replace this red part that's circled with the number 1. The limit of 5 as x approaches 6, this is the constant law, uh, or where the limit of, of a number, and it's always going to be 5 no matter what value of x. I plug in. So this will be minus 5 and 1 minus 5 is equal to negative 4. All right let's take a look at the second one. So we have the limit um, x times g of x. So this time we're going to use our product law. So this states that I can say the limit of x as x approaches 6 times the limit of g of x as x approaches 6. So for the first part of this term, we are going to use um, rule number 8, where we can take the number x approaching 6 and replace x with the 6. So when I write this, you'll notice that I'm not writing the word limit anymore because I'm actually kind of taking 6 and I am replacing x with that number. In the second piece, uh, we have the limit of g of x. And this whole thing we know is negative 3. I'm going to substitute that into that spot there. So I have a limit times, sorry, 6 times negative 3, which equals negative 18. Let's look a little bit at some uh, more difficult questions um, applying the limit laws. So in example two, uh, we can use the one that states in the polynomial that we can actually just take the number two and we can substitute it in for all the x's that we see in the function. So when I do this, I am going to get, now notice I'm not writing the word limit anymore. So we get two cubed because I'm plugging in the number as x approaches two, I don't need the word limit anymore. So plus 4 squared minus 3, so I get 8 plus 16 minus 3, and then that gives me 21. Now in the second example, so same thing, I can write these separately as a quotient, but I can actually just put the number 1 and replace all the x's with the number 1. So this will give me 1 to the power of 4 plus 1 squared minus 1, all divided by 1 squared plus 5. So in the numerator, uh, 1 plus 1 minus 1 gives me 1. And then in the denominator, 1 squared plus 5 gives me 6. All right, let's take a look at a couple more. So in the next example, uh, I want you to evaluate these limits graphically and then confirm algebraically. Now, 
Actually, I'm going to kind of reverse and interchange that too. So because in order for me to graph this, I might need to simplify. Now the problem with this is when I put x is approaching 1 and I plug it right directly into the question, ignoring the numerator, I can see that when I plug 1 into the denominator, I'm going to get division by 0. So I need to find some kind of tricks that will get this to be simpler. So I can see that I can actually factor the numerator. So I'm going to take and rewrite the word limit because I haven't applied or put x equal to 1 yet. So I can see that the numerator is going to be factored to be x plus 2 times x minus 1, all divided by x minus 1. So the x minus 1s can cancel off. And I'm left with limit of x plus 2 as x approaches 1. So if I graph this, what I'm graphing is this part here. And I'm saying that this is equal to y. So here, this is a line. I have a y-intercept of 2. And I have a slope of 1, which is right here. So this will give me this line here. And I'm going to connect all these points together with a ruler. Oops, a little bit off. So I'm going to connect this again. And okay, that's a little bit off. But I can see that it's supposed to go through here as well. Okay. And I can see that as x approaches 1, on my graph, as x approaches 1, I will hit the value 3. Now the problem is, x can't be 1 because we noticed from the beginning that if x is 1, then we're going to have this function to be undefined. So therefore, I need to put an open circle at um, the point 1. 3. Now I can see from the graph it would approach 3 and when I plug in the number here, I'm going to plug in the number um, 1 into my x, I'm going to get 1 plus 2 and I also get the number 3 as my limit. And that's it.